Or as Bernie Bernanoff calls a hard-working, box-to-box type of player. But a big engine can, can cover a lot of ground. Means So just like many of you guys that love football and that love being, you know, an athlete, being in college or even, you know, playing at any level, um, you know, I just want to share my story and explain how I got to where I got. Um, you know, it's been where I'm currently as Division One. You know, in college, it was it was very you know a very hard road to get here, and I thought I'd share with my you know followers and stuff like that to show you that there's different journeys to get where you want to go, and you know my journey started when I was younger. I started at four years old, um, started playing, had never you know watched soccer or even picked up a ball to play with as a kid. I think. I think it just happened naturally and considering my dad played when he was younger in Mexico, you know, I think things started to, uh, you know, progress forward as far as my journey in playing soccer. So yeah, I started at four, I think I played in, you know, these, these leagues for about, I want to say two and a half years, maybe closer to when I got to seven. Um, I started playing club soccer and so my first club ever was Manteca and at the time it was called the club team was called Flames. So that's where I that's where I started my journey and it was very different uh, going from you know like a rec league to then going to a club, you know, a club team. It's very different, a lot more organized. We're traveling a lot now. So that's definitely a lot of pressure, I guess, for me and my family who weren't used to you know, being committed to a team or committed to anything as far as for me in any sport or any activity. So it's very different. Around that time, you know, I started to progress very fast and I think that's where a lot of things took off. And I think at that age, from around seven to nine, I think, you know, I was very, very good at the time. I think significantly, I think it was a little bit bigger than most of the kids at the time as well. So. I thought I started to progress very fast and and very quickly and you know things start to change you know you start looking for other clubs and it had reached a point where I thought I had outgrown you know the club that I had started with and you know that's normal for any player any player that wants to achieve something more and throughout that time you know I was very appreciative of uh, you know when I was younger you know always playing stuff always been an appreciative guy and kid at the time so you know moving teams was definitely something difficult that I had to do but I ended up doing and I stayed in the same you know city I guess you would say Manteca me being from Stockton I guess you know it's a little bit a little bit of a drive um, so the team was called Newcastle and it was definitely a better team and you know even higher ranked um, at the time we had a lot of players that you know were good players and definitely had the level to be playing at a higher level like club or academy or something like that um, you know that team even uh, produced two professional players so far so it was definitely a team you know filled with good players and it definitely helped me elevate at the time getting there I was still really good and I still did all the work that I could and still progressed a lot and you know I definitely got better really different from being you know the best player on another team to then being you know the third best or the fourth best and you know that's not a problem especially when you're trying to get better at you know sport you know playing with better players playing against better competition you know definitely helps you you know get to where you want to go so yeah from there you know that my time ended there after a couple years maybe at around 14 and the club that I actually started with when uh, when I had already started playing soccer, you know, made an actual club soccer team at the time. So, you know, it's either that or try to play academy and me being a kid and, you know, not wanting to, I guess, or not knowing what was after that, you know, playing college or even playing at a higher level, I kind of just played just to play. And doing that so in that time made me make a decision where I went back to the old club team I guess in Stockton so you know it could have been like a step back and, and a time where I needed to transition to be a better player to you know challenge myself 
it, it was definitely a step back and I think this is where I, I would say my career you know took a little dip and definitely you know a time where I I really at the end of this time at this club I didn't really want to play anymore and it wasn't due to the facts of the coaches or the players you know I had just lost a lot of interest in playing and it just wasn't fun you know like just not I guess playing against the best competition you know seeing some players that you had played with playing at an even higher level you know at the time it's you know you want to be at a better better spot and better player and like I said it wasn't due to anybody I think it was just due to me you know not as enjoying it anymore it didn't feel like a challenge anymore so yeah that was the club that I played for you know until I was about 17 and then I went to a club in Turlock where ultimately you know I wanted to challenge myself one more time and it was definitely a very high ranked club team at the time and I tried out I definitely think I did well um, unfortunately I didn't make the first team so I, I would say I was cut I was invited to the B team uh, where ultimately I didn't see the sacrifice in driving over there to play on the B team when I thought I was good enough to play with the A team um, so that was definitely a hard time, you know, being cut on your last club team, you know, it was definitely a moment of reflection and, you know, in a way to persevere in the future. So, you know, that will all tie into the, my last high school season. Um, it all started, you know, freshman year. I went to high school not knowing anything or not knowing how high school soccer worked. You just thought, you know, it was a lot better, you know, a lot bigger players. You're playing with older players. You know, it's definitely something different. And my first year, I definitely, I guess, learned that, that you know, size, I guess, matters in a way. I was, I was a very small kid at the time. I hadn't grown anymore. You know, it was a very hard time. Uh, but I still thought I was up to the level and, I mean, unfortunately, I. I played JV my first year where I was the captain. You know, definitely had a lot of fun, a lot of memories with a lot of good, a lot of good friends that I had, childhood friends. So it was definitely fun, but it's still very, you know, disappointing to see other people, you know, on the varsity team and I'm on the JV team. But, you know, I continued to try to play, continue to try to be better. So then when my sophomore year came around, I made the varsity team and I, I mean, I even wore the, ten, the number 10 jersey at the time, so I guess, you know, I was somebody that was significant to the team or, you know, valued by the team. And it, it started very well, started scoring a lot of goals my sophomore year. And then through the middle of the season, um, one thing happened and another thing happened. I got benched and I think there's like a span of, you know, three games where I didn't see the field anymore, which is very weird after starting, you know, the first seven, six games. Then after that, I picked up an injury where I would miss another, you know, three games. And so at that point I had missed six games already and lose rhythm at the moment. So, you know, it's very hard and it's very hard to catch rhythm again. So. You have to continue to try to do the best you can in practice and do all that you can to, you know, improve yourself. And at that time, I did my best and my opportunity came to start again the last couple games of the season. So my sophomore year started really well and it didn't end so well. But, you know, continued, waited for my junior year where I thought I had one of my better seasons where I finished with double digit assists, you know, close to double digit goals. I was still the number 10, one of you know, the vital players on the team and you know it was going well and I thought it was a really good season. We made it to the playoffs for the first time in a long time so you know it could only lead to good things during the senior year and this was a year where I mean I could have taken it you know even more serious than I did but after I was cut during the summer you know I proved to myself that I could do it but I felt like I could have still done more to achieve more for the team and for myself and you know during that time I had got cut and I had a probably you know received one of the worst injuries that I've had ever and it was more than just like it, it had to do with my ankle and I had tore something in my ankle so during that time over the summer I was rehabbing it before the fall could come so then you know I could get ready for the high school season and it was definitely hard as I did four months of uh, physical therapy 
and it wasn't easy um, you know going there every day getting you know work done and always training trying to get back for the season and be ready it was definitely something hard but fortunately my senior year I had my best season ever and I want to say I scored about 17 goals that year had about eight assists so you know I was I did everything I could for the team and for myself but I feel like you know I could have still done more I think at the time it was a transition period and I didn't know what it took what it took to get to a higher level so I didn't take the practices that serious didn't take my craft that serious I thought I was just good enough to play at any level and that definitely wasn't the case so after that season I showed up to a junior college my hometown junior college Delta uh, summer of 2019 and that's where I showed up and like I said I thought I was just a good player I could show up and do whatever I could you know I would make the team and that happened I made the team um, and there was no problem with that I made the team and I thought I was good enough to play but you know the coach deemed me that I wasn't good enough and that season I had no role on the team um, played zero minutes you know traveled everywhere was with the team in every moment but it was very hard season after after having a good high school season thinking you were really good and showing up to a junior college where other people that you thought you were better than are now playing over you which was very hard for me at least you know someone that's dealt with confidence issues you know throughout most of his career and as of like the early teens to my high school career you know it was very hard and that happening didn't help the case in anyhow and so therefore I, I went through the season and you know I was very angry at what had happened but I had realized that I needed to do more so over the winter I had joined the MPSL team trying to get better and you know prove to myself that when I came back in the spring I would you know I would be ready and once the spring came I started off really good um, I was getting reps with the first team so it was it was a drastic change from going from zero minutes to first team reps as far as the junior college level and you know I was ready for the season and ready for the spring and ready for the fall that was coming that year but you know God works in mysterious ways and during that time um, it was a time of transition again for life in general and so COVID happened during that time and so what that meant was there was no spring season there was no fall season and essentially there was no sports so for me I took that as a time to get better and to ultimately you know find my way again in soccer and luckily for me my backyard is you know a good size where I had two goals and had had a lot of cones had a lot of had a lot of ideas to get better and during that time I I trained I trained my ass off I ran every day I tried to do as much weights as I could and I practiced soccer every day and whether that was healthy or not uh, I'm not sure I was you know I was very exhausted every day mentally where during the COVID a lot of the days were you know I felt like I didn't want to I didn't want to continue to train but I knew that if I really wanted this I had to continue and I had to do what I had to do over the COVID time because I knew that I would be training harder than any any other person so when the time came around I'd be ready so you know COVID was definitely a, you know a time where I think and I'm very thankful that it happened you know it wasn't a good time for life in general but for me it was something you know a blessing in disguise I think that helped me really focus and reactivate like my passion for soccer and you know it was a good it was a good time and I enjoyed it even though the days were hard I enjoyed it and thought I was getting better so then when the you know during winter of 2020 and 2021 spring I you know start soccer soccer started to open up again and that's where I joined this team called TOJ and this is a team that I'll, I will forever be grateful for as I got a lot of playing time they trusted me and I just needed someone to trust me and to give me minutes and to show that I can do it and play at a good level and an even higher level and show people that I that I can play and that 
whatever had happened before was just a fluke. So that's a club I'm very thankful for and they gave me a lot of minutes. They gave me a lot of trust. So going through all that tough training in COVID, it was definitely, you know, a light, you know, at the end of the tunnel. It's definitely playing, you know, something that I had missed and felt that it was taken away from me. After that, uh, I finally got to play at the junior college level, which was 2021 fall. And over the summer, it was going really well. I was playing really well. I felt really confident. Um, I was named captain as well for this team. So it was definitely, you know, something, I felt like something big was coming. And it definitely started that way. The first 10 games, I had, I had five goals, uh, five assists. So what that equal, that equal to was 15 points already in the first 10 matches. So, and I'm playing from a deeper position, maybe the eight or the six. So to be able to do that was something, you know, special for me and at a time where, you know, it felt like all that I had gone through was all for a reason. We weren't the best team. So personally it was going well in a, in a sense of stats, but as a team and for myself, you know, it wasn't going the best. You know, I want to win and that's what the sport's about. So, you know, I started my recruitment process in the middle of the season. So after that hot start, started emailing coaches, you know, started, started to get interest from other coaches as well. Um, you know, I got a lot of emails back, you know, so a couple teams were interested, you know, the most, the best team that was interested was another D1 and that was Northridge at the time, you know, they replied really quickly and they're really interested. I was getting texts every day. You know how, how I was doing, how my grades and stuff like that. But we continued forward and we continued to progress. Finished the season. Um, I thought I was one of the best sixes in the conference. Finished uh, tied for assist as the leader in the conference. So I definitely had a good season personally, and I thought it would lead to a lot of offers. But that's not how life works. Um, I didn't get a lot of offers. I, but I did get invited to the sophomore showcase down in LA. So that was big for me and I knew there was gonna be a lot of college coaches there and I knew I had to perform. So I went down there, I performed really well, my team won 4-0 and after that I did get a couple colleges to email me. Um, ultimately I chose Division II school down in Oakland and it was a full ride so I felt like it was a good step for me, being from Stockton, not going too far away from my family, and still playing at a good level and having a chance to still play Division One after that. And it was all going well, you know, it wasn't too bad of an experience. I lived on my own for a while, um, but it ultimately it just wasn't what I wanted to do. And I spent spring there, and the teammates were great, you know, the coaches were good, and I think that was a time where I struggled a lot in the beginning to adapt, you know, a new environment, a new city, a new living space. It was definitely hard. But, you know, as I always have, I continued forward, my head down, just working hard. And essentially, I decided that I think this level wasn't for me and there was more, you know, more to gain. And I ultimately entered the transfer portal. And during that time, it was a very hard decision to take, but I thought it's a decision I wanted because it wasn't fulfilling my life. And over the summer, I played USL 2 in the summer in San Francisco, and a club that is my most, you know, loved club. It's I would say that this club, you know, helped me get to where I am now, and it's helped me progress as a football player, as a leader, and as a person. You know, having to drive over there two hours to practice every day and two hours back getting home at one in the morning is something that was very hard, but I'm glad I did. And it was, it was a moment where I had to sacrifice a lot, which was money, work, and you know, being at home all the time. I was almost over there all the time practicing and games. And so over the summer, I was there mostly all summer long and it was a big sacrifice. But, you know, all sacrifices have rewards and that ultimately got me a lot of good film and I emailed that to a couple of Division One coaches. There's a lot of Division One interest and ultimately my dream school, you know, came forward and offered me a spot on the team and that was UOP. 
So since I'm from here, you know, it was a dream to play in front of my hometown. So that was a dream come true, and I felt like the, all my sacrifice that I had done in previous years in that summer, you know, had finally paid off. And, you know, I was extremely thankful and, you know, grateful for the opportunity there. So then the fall came around, and, you know, I thought it was, you know, going pretty well. Um, you know, nothing too crazy. Unfortunately, that season I was deemed ineligible, you know, for transfer rules from from the D2 that I was at, um, leaving after six months, so you're required to stay one year at the previous institution before transferring to another four year, and I didn't know that. So the whole 2022, uh, I sat at the bench. Another moment transition, another moment of hard times, and another moment where I had to keep putting my head down and keep working hard and show myself that everything happens for a reason. In the 2023, Summer came and again I was with San Francisco and this is a time where I hadn't played in almost over a year. So I felt like I had gotten better with practices at the Division One school and I felt like I had became a better player. So now was the time to, you know, show what I had learned over the over the year and you know help this team, you know, win games and help my teammates, you know, be a part of a winning team. And again I was the captain for the second year. And it was definitely a good season. We won a lot of games and I played mostly all the minutes. And, you know, after waiting so long, almost a year to play soccer again, it was definitely a moment that I will forever will be grateful for. And like I said, this is the most team that I've loved ever. And it's a team that I always take with me. And, you know, definitely comes down to the coaches that were there. And, you know, they know who they are. You know, they're amazing. They showed me a lot and for them I'll forever be grateful for what they showed me and I hope you know one day we can collaborate again. So then the fall of 2023 comes around and I'm still dealing with eligibility issues. So you know the you know going into the preseason you still have that on your mind every day. But I had to I had to do what I had to do and try to train as best as I can. And unfortunately after the third training in preseason I strained my hamstring. A tissue injury where it's kept me out for a while. And that was very difficult as, you know, being someone that's not guaranteed minutes, being someone that's not considered a full-time starter. So if I come back, my spot, you know, is essentially gone. So, you know, I came back after almost two weeks, finally trained, still dealing with eligibility issues. And I finally came back and I was training well, and then one day, uh, they finally told me I'd be eligible for the season. So with 10 games left, you know, it's it was it was go time. So um, playing in my first game, you know, helped my confidence a bit. Even though it wasn't the best game ever in my limited minutes, you know, I tried my best. And a moment that I had waited for a long time. I hope to continue this. I hope to one day be able to say that I played pro or that I got to play pro and I know where I'm at is not I'm not in the best position now but once you continue and you continue to strive forward and progress and put your head down good things can happen so yeah that, that was my journey from where I started when I was younger to playing division one now and you know I'm extremely grateful for my journey whether all those setbacks that I took and all those failures that I've had I think they've helped me become the player that I am and you know it's developed me a lot a lot more than anything else could have and I feel like without this story I wouldn't have been where I am now so you know that's gonna that's gonna close the video and you know that's my that's my story and I'm I hope that you stay to the end to hear my full story and I thank you guys for supporting me always thank you